He floats like a butterfly and stings like a thing that stings. What's up, my peoples? I'm Go here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the 3A Transformers The Last Night, Bumblebee. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. I have to move him off to the side. And right up front here, as you can see, we have a nice big image there of the Bumblemeister. Transformers The Last Night, Bumblebee. On this side of the box, Autobot symbol, Transformers The Last Night, Bumblebee. On the other side, same thing. On the top, nothing. On the bottom, nothing. On the back of the box, you have a nice little schematic -y image there of Bumblebee, Transformers The Last Night, Bumblebee, bloody, bloody, bloody. And of course, you open up the sleeve via the Velcro, and that just peels right off. And you have Transformers The Last Night, Autobot Symbol, Bumblebee, and everything is encased inside the big block of foam. There are the accessories, and here is where the figure itself goes. And that's basically it for the packaging. And moving right along, here we have Bumblebee as he appeared in Transformers The Last Night. And um, yeah, another amazingly well done figure here from 3A. Absolutely love this. So let's get in close here so we can take a look at the Bumblemeister in all of his beauty and all of his glory and all of this wonderful, wonderful detail. So let's take a look at the head sculpt here. The head sculpt is very, very nicely done, nicely detailed. The paintwork, as always, is just wonderful. And throughout the toy, you these little scratches and scuffs. Make him look all battle-worn. Nice Autobot symbol right there on the forehead. But the head sculpt, very, very nicely done. As you can see, lots of molded detail, even in his neck here. On the chest, again, wonderfully detailed. Looks really, really good. And just all the detail going down the arms. As always, just incredibly detailed. About as screen accurate as you can get, but tons of detail going on throughout the figure. Again, you got that nice kind of weathered look with the scratches and scuffs and whatnot. He's been in some scraps, because he's the bee. And his big old feet, or his big old feet. But again, look at all that detail going on in there. Like, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. And moving up the back, again, look, more detail, tons of detail. I'm surprised my table can withstand the weight of all this detail, because there is literally a ton of it. I don't know. <laughs> even his butt plates, even his butt, look at those butt plates. Look at those butt plates, look at them, look at them. But again, lots of detail. Even the interior of his door wings actually look like door interiors, which is hilarious. But they did it, they did it. You get transparent plastic there for the windows. It's kind of a tinted transparent plastic there. All around, really, really cool. You got the wheels there on his back. They're all dirty, binged up. But yeah, just really, really well done. Oh, let's take a look at the uh, the forearm pieces here. Again, lots of detail. Did I mention it has lots of detail? Lots of detail. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it. Awesome. Very, very awesome. Now, as far as articulation goes, again, ton of stuff moves on these figures. The head itself is on a ball joint, as well as a ball joint at the base of the neck. So you have some good wiggly, waggly movement there. He can look up a good bit. He can look down. Head can rotate about that far, which is really as much as the head really needs to rotate. Um, his little, uh, his little, little ears. They're on ball joints, little horns or whatever, little antenna on ball joints, so these can move around as well. You can position those however you want. Now these little bits on his chest are on ball joints, so these you can have them angled however you wish. Um, as far as the arms go, the arms, they can rotate on a soft ratchet. Uh, these bits right here on his shoulders or on a hinge, so they can 
move out of the way. These pieces on uh, his arms as well are on a hinge at the base and a ball joint right there. So these can move out of the way to accommodate any arm movement. The arms can. This ratchet's kind of stiff here. Ah, come on. The arms can move in and out. And again, very stiff joint going on there. You do also have some forward movement there on the shoulder as well. You do have rotation right below that shoulder joint there. You do have a double jointed elbow. Let's come down here. So you got the main joint, which is right there. And then you have another joint that's right here in the forearm itself. So you get a nice full range of movement there on the elbow. And uh, the forearms themselves can also rotate. And coming down to the hands here, the hands are on a ball joint, so you get your wiggly waggly. They're also on a hinge there, so they can move inward if you need them to. Uh, the hands are na nice and articulated. The thumb is on a ball joint at the base, and you have a hinge right there. Each finger is just on a hinge at the base and a hinge at the midpoint there. So, you get some pretty nice articulated hands there, which can make a good looking fist. And I appreciate articulated hands that can make a good looking fist. Don't know why, but I do. Now as far as waist movements, you do have an upper torso joint right here. It is on a ball joint, so you can get a good ab crunch going on. The waist itself also on a ball joint. So you got wiggly waggly there, as well as rotation. You can get a good crunch going on here. I turned on his headlights by accident. <laughs> Save that for later. But um, yeah, you get a good ab crunch going on there as far as the legs go. Uh, these panels right here on his thighs are on a ball joint, so you can move those out of the way. They're also on a hinge at the base. So they can kind of angle down if you need them to, so you can kind of get those out of the way as you need. And the legs themselves can move forward. About that far back. It can go back pretty far and you can see his little his butt panels are just on a uh, soft you know rubbery plastic here so those will move out of the way for you so outward movements you can do pretty much the full splits there you do have thigh rotation you do have not a single jointed not a double jointed you have a triple jointed knee that's right you have three joints here to work with a knee you have one up here one here and one down here so you got a triple jointed knee, and you can get a very good range of movement there with a triple jointed knee. Uh, his kneecaps are on a hinge, and they can move up and down if you need them to. And as far as his feet go, there are quite a few things that move on his feet. His toe here is on a joint that can slide up and down. Uh, this section of the foot can also move if you need it to. Um, the foot itself is on a ball joint right up here, so this can wiggle. So you do have upward movement, downward movement. Got tiltage, you got rotation, and you also have kind of a ratcheted joint in here that can also let the foot move down and up and just give you that extra bit of stability here. It's a stiff joint, but it's there if you need it. And moving on to his back, because even his back has articulation, uh, the door wings can move up and down. The doors themselves are on a hinge here that can move in and out. This section here can also move up and down independently, as well as a hinge that can move in and out. So you can kind of have those angled however you wish. Uh, these wheels on his back are also on a ball joint at the base and a hinge right up in here in the wheel. So you can kind of have those angled however you want. Have them sitting high, have them sitting low. Do whatever you want with those. So... Even his back has a, uh, a measure of posability here. Um, one extra joint to mention here in the shoulders is you can actually pull the shoulders up right there on a ratchet to give it that extra upward and outward movement if you need it. And uh, yeah, again, just a super, super posable figure. So now let's talk about accessories. Now this figure doesn't come with a lot of stuff, but what it does come with is a pretty cool. He does include his hammer, which I call the Bumble Hammer. So here is his Bumble Hammer done 
in silver and yellow. And as usual, very nicely detailed. Again, just kind of scratched and scuffed up. But looks quite, quite nice. All the detail going down the handle there. Looks quite good. So he's got the bumble hammer. He has his uh, his battle mask here. Which is pretty straightforward and to the point. You got that tinted transparent plastic there for the eyes. Again, you got those scratches and scuffs in there. So you got the battle mask. And you also get this bit right here, which we'll show off what this is for in a little bit. And you also get this little thing right here. And again, we'll show off what this is for in a bit. So first, let's talk about the Bumble Hammer here and how we get him to hold it, because he can't really hold it if you just put it in his hand and try to wrap his fingers around it. It doesn't really work. Can't really, can't, can't really hold it. The way his thumb works, it just doesn't really. Eh. Kind of, sort of, but, you know, not exactly a dead solid grip, as you can see. So the way you get him to hold it is we bring in this little piece right here, and this will peg in to the palm of his hand right in there. So you just take that and it is a specific shape so you want to make sure you have it plugged in the right way. Which I don't think I do. Wait, wait, oh no, this way. There we go. You want to plug it in this way so his little ridges are facing up. So you plug that into his hand and then there is a port right there in the handle. And you just take that and just push that on. Like so. Oops. There we go. And we'll actually click into place as you can see. And you can see now, even with his hand wide open, he's not dropping that. So now we can wrap his fingers around it. And now he holds that with no problem. So there is B with his bumble hammer. Now, as far as the battle mask goes, um, it's just very straightforward. It just tabs right onto his face, like so, and holds on. Very securely, and there is B with his a battle mask. And again, you can kind of have these up or bring them down. Whatever you want to do there with his little antenna. But yeah, there's the battle mask, and it looks quite, quite cool. So now let's talk about storage, because you can store his bumble hammer on him if you don't want him holding it. And that is where this piece comes into play. So what you do with this bit is this will just hook over these posts right here on his back so that just drops right down like so now it helps to actually remove his door wings when you do this and they just peg right in they come back separately in the box and they just peg right into his back so we'll just pull these out and what you do here with the hammer is as you can see on this section of the hammer there is this little notch here that is cut out and what you do is you put the hammer in with this notch kind of facing in sideways here, and then it'll drop in, and then you just give it a turn. Get it right, there you go. Then you just give it a turn, and there you go. And there you have the hammer stored on his back, and then you can put his door wings back on. And they'll keep everything all nice and safe like. So, there you go. That's how you store the hammer. The bumble hammer. And the last thing to talk about is lights. Yes, he has lights. So if we come back here, uh, the battery compartment is right back here in this little central portion of his back. Just get this popped up just so you can see if I can. Come on, there we go. There's the battery compartment. As you can see, it takes uh, two LR44s, which are not included. You will have to get those yourself. But you got your little battery compartment right there. So you pop the batteries in, and the button is right there, and when you push it, boop, his headlights come on. So there you go. His headlight nipples can shine all nice and bright-like, so you can have that going on if you want to. And his eyes also light up as well. Uh, you just pop off the top of his head, it's tabbed on. And the batteries go right in there. Takes another two LR44s, which are not included. And I'll just pop his uh, pop his skull back on here. There we go. Pop that back on. 
and the on off switch is right there just a button right back there on the back of his head and when you push that boop, boop, there you go his eyes light up with some nice bright LEDs that's a little creepy looking honestly looks a little creepy but hey they light up if you want them to light up you can light up his chest and there you go and you can if you want you can put on the battle mask and the eyes will even shine through the battle mask now that's creepy that's that's creepy right there that's creepy <laughs> but hey you can do it the thing you can do if you want to do it so there you have that and now for comparison here he is with combiner wars devastator just you can get a sense of the size of the figure if you want an approximate measurement he's about 15 and a quarter inches tall to the top of his head so he is a very nicely sized figure here he is with the uh, 3a dark of the moon prime just because as you can see how they look side by side and here he is with the 3a Last night, Optimus Prime, and they look quite good together. Quite, quite good. I don't think B is supposed to be this big compared to Prime. I think he's supposed to be a bit shorter, but still, they still look good together. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care. They look good. They look good. And last but not least, just because here he is with the uh, Masterpiece movie, Bumblebee. There you go. <laughs> it's just a little guy. So. There you go. So there you have the 3A Bumblebee. Um, what can I say? It's just another fantastic piece here from 3A. The level of detail, the level of articulation is just amazing. Just like I said with Prime, you know, this looks like it jumped right off the screen. Just, it just looks amazing. It looks fantastic. I love it. And just like I said with Prime, you know, and any of these 3A Transformers figures, you know, even if you don't like Transformers that don't transform, I hope you can at least give credit where it's due because, you know, the people who put this figure together did an amazing job on it. They deserve all the credit in the world because you can tell they put a lot of work and they put a lot of love into this piece and, you know, it shows and it's absolutely amazing, in my opinion anyway. So there you go. Now, if you would like this or any other 3A products, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below so you can check that out. You can also check out my Transformers Movie Toys playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out M Games. Check out Lori Plan. Follow me on Twitter. All of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the 3A Transformers The Last Night to Bumblebee. And this is MGo saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Be a geek. Be proud. Boom in your face. Bumblebee. Yes, I know we're bigger than the set, okay? We just have to go with it. Now, I need to leave Earth so I can find some answers. What? No, I'm not gonna get abducted, turn evil, and then try to kill you, you silly little bug. <laughs> You're silly. You know that? You're silly. You're a silly little guy. That's why I like you, B. That's why I like you. Because you're silly. We're all gonna die. Now I know you heard that.